おめえじゃねえんだってまだ生きてんのかよロジャーが待ってる男は少なくともティーチおめえじゃねえ<笑>死なねえぜ相棒。So we all saw those clips. And well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up? King Line here today, a One Piece discussion video. Now, a very simple one because all it is is my literal interpretation of the quotes that were stated in the clips. All right, when Whitebeard says to teach, the man Roger was waiting for. At the very least, it's not you, Teach. The man Roger is waiting for, as if like Roger still exists. When Roger tells Rayleigh, "I won't die," I'm like, "Bro, there's there's, there's something, something going on there. There's something going on there." So, in my personal opinion, I think Roger he's alive, all right, and he's waiting on Raftel for someone, the right person. In order to give the treasure to, or maybe he's the gatekeeper, but he's on Raftel nonetheless. He's waiting for the right person. Now, before I go any further, I understand full well that within the context of the story, when Roger tells Rayleigh, "I won't die," it's more so his will. All right, he ushered in the Great Pirate Age to find the One Piece when he died in Logtown, and his will. Is going to be passed on from person to person, and I guess that has ties to the will of D too. The will of D is something that's far more serious in the story, so I won't dive into that, you know, completely. But Roger's will has ties to the will of D, and you have Whitebeard. He even states to like his final words to Blackbeard. He pretty much states how just like Roger, Ace's will will be passed on. From person to person, mainly through you know Luffy. So the whole thing here is Roger lives in the sense of the wills and the ambitions of pirates that admire him, that took his words to heart, that search for the One Piece, and so on and so forth. And through those who are D, the will of D, Monkey D. So that's how Roger technically lives. That's how he won't die. All right, his name is forever etched in the annals of history. All right, like on some Troy shit, immortality, take it, it's yours. Like one of Brad Pitt's greatest quotes of all fucking time, epic. But, but, I'm gonna take it more literally, because as we continue to learn a few things about hockey as the new world progresses, because hockey is now being a cornerstone. I mean, when the time skip first hit. That was when we actually、uh, first got to see the Armit Harding hockey, and that's been constant through and through. And we know that there is a certain degree of mastery. Like you can actually train your conquerors hockey to a certain extent. And Goldie Roger himself had a unique hockey among all hockeys, the power to hero all things. And that was and that granted him some like crazy stuff where he could actually understand languages that he didn't know how to read at all, ancient languages. And the whole thing here is that as we figure out more and more about hockey, I got the feeling that hockey, since it does have, to a certain degree, a spiritual component, it does. I got the feeling that probably Roger exists in some type of spiritual form in the Last Island, Raftel, and he's waiting for the right person. Either he's a gatekeeper or he. Like once the person finds the One Piece, he comes in there and you know he tells the story. I don't know, and that probably has ties to the real Poneglyph too. I got the feeling that the real Poneglyph and the One Piece are connected in some way, shape, and form. Honestly, but the whole point here is that when it comes to Goldie Roger himself, 
when I say he's alive, he his body obviously is 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 you know a corpse. He's dead. He was not only was he executed, but also he had that disease that was incurable. However, when it comes to hockey, because there is a spiritual component of hockey, there is a chance that Roger does exist as some type of you know corporal energy, like a spiritual body, and he's just waiting for the right person in Rafta. That's what I honestly believe. I think that Roger exists. He still exists on the planet as a different energy form. Because hockey could possibly allow for that to, you know, be reality. Because if you remember, if you remember, when it comes to Brooke's uh, Yomi Yomi No Me, Brooke was wandering the, uh, I forgot what it was called, but that whole area where uh, Gekko Mora's Island was, he was wandering that area as a spiritual form. And Brooke does have the ability to actually, like, remove his soul from his body because his soul beats on like a faster frequency like his soul is more potent that's the reason why he is alive technically alive even though he's a skeleton he, he has no flesh and blood but his soul is what actually maintains his attachment to the world and when it comes to someone like perona perona her devil free allows her to exist as a spiritual being so in one piece you can actually see spirits. Anyone can see spirits and interact with spirits if you have hockey, essentially. So the whole point here is hockey, we know that it has some unique properties, especially Conqueror's hockey. And knowing that Goldie Roger had a hockey above these hockeys, the power to hear all things hockey, a unique hockey, he probably is existing as a spiritual form, just how we know in One Piece people can be actually seen in spiritual forms we know this for a fact finally i want to put it out there that i think roger could see into the future probably the distant future and the reason why is because i have to tie it back into the power to hear all things if roger could hear the opponent glyph and that's the reason why he could actually write in that language then hearing the opponent glyph is hearing maybe the voices of the past the script of the past so if he could hear the past, there's a chance that he could actually hear the future. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of weird because like not seeing, hearing the future, but just you know keep it in mind. And we do know that there are some folks in One Piece, like Madame Shirley, like Bowser Hawkins, that can see quite a bit into the future. Bowser Hawkins with his cars can predict the outcome of any match essentially, and Madame Shirley with a crystal ball, she can also predict the future. And we know that because the power to hear all things is unique among hockey, because it's a power to hear all things. And we do know that when it comes to, like, senses, that mainly goes towards observation hockey. I mean, it could be a conquerous hockey thing. We're, again, I'm not too sure. But those type of senses and those type of abilities normally go with observation hockey, specifically. So... If he knew what was going to happen, because it's hinted by Rayleigh that Roger knew that he was ushering in the Great Pirate Age, but they're not too sure. But if he did know, that would mean that Roger, and depending on how far he knew ahead, like, was it on his final journey that he actually knew was going to happen? Because we knew that he was sick. He knew that he was sick on his final voyage, like three years deep when they finally conquered the Grand Line. I think, I think it's three years deep. So, the whole thing here is this. If he knew he was going to die, he could have put fail-safes, or he could have put some type of plan in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the works, where once he died, he would become a spiritual entity of some kind, and then he'd go over to Rafta, and he'd just wait. So, again, I'm throwing it out there, but, I mean, it, it's really out there. Like, the theory itself is like, whoa, but it's food for thought. Again, with Oda, a lot of times, a lot of times, things are so far from what they appear to be. So, I mean, that's why he's Goda. So, that's it. I'm done. So, as always, rate the video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do whatever you want to do. Of course, comment section. Leave your thoughts on the comment section down below. Do you want to add something? Am I going batshit crazy? Very possible. I may be going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Who knows? And, of course, subscribe. Peace. Have a nice goddamn day.